And thank you to the Academy for allowing us to present this study. Um, I'm from the Texas Center for Voice and Swallowing in Houston, Texas. It's a large private practice group, and um, Dr. Caro is a professor of speech voice pathology at the College of St. Rose in Albany. Uh, similar topic, hoarseness, globus, throat clearing, and cough are common symptoms of chronic laryngitis or chronic laryngotracheitis. We see these patients all the time in our practice. Uh, research does show conflicting evidence of utility of empiric acid suppression for these symptoms, um, with the recent concern for overuse and inappropriate use of PPIs long term. Um, we need objective testing, and it's becoming better tolerated and more accurate all the time. Um, this is the patient we're talking about, the patient with chronic laryngitis with mild to moderate inflammation of the superglottis, glottis, and subglottis. Um, some of the same things Dr. Friedman talked about. Um, um, in the GI literature, symptom scores really do not predict the severity of esophageal GERD by pH probe or esophagoscopy. In our literature for chronic laryngitis, symptom scores likewise do not seem to correlate with laryngopharyngeal reflux severity. Um, nor did the signs of chronic laryngitis seem to correlate. And um, signs and symptoms of chronic laryngitis tend to improve both in acid suppression groups and placebo groups. Uh, we know other etiologies do exist to uh, contribute to laryngotracheitis. So the reason for this study is a very simple study. Uh, simply report the incidence of pharyngeal reflux um, in a larger study of patients with chronic laryngitis using the breast tech or pharyngeal pH device that Dr. Friedman used um, to determine if symptom severity score, reflux symptom score, or chief complaint could predict the presence of pharyngeal reflux and to describe the diurnal pattern of the pharyngeal reflux in our event positive subjects. So this was a prospective analysis of 160. Good morning. Thank you to the Academy for allowing us to present this study. Um, I'm from the Texas Center for Voice and Swallowing in Houston, Texas. It's a large private practice group, and um, Dr. Caro is a professor of speech voice pathology at the College of St. Rose in Albany. Uh, similar topic, hoarseness, globus, throat clearing, and cough are common symptoms of chronic laryngitis or chronic laryngotracheitis. We see these patients all the time in our practice. Uh, research does show conflicting evidence of utility of empiric acid suppression for these symptoms, um, with the recent concern for overuse and inappropriate use of PPIs long term. Um, we need objective testing, and it's becoming better tolerated and more accurate all the time. Um, this is the patient we're talking about, the patient with chronic laryngitis with mild to moderate inflammation of the superglottis, glottis, and subglottis. Um, some of the same things Dr. Friedman talked about. Um, um, in the GI literature, symptom scores really do not predict the severity of esophageal GERD by pH probe or esophagoscopy. In our literature for chronic laryngitis, symptom scores likewise do not seem to correlate with laryngopharyngeal reflux severity. Um, nor did the signs of chronic laryngitis seem to correlate. And um, signs and symptoms of chronic laryngitis tend to improve both in acid suppression groups and placebo groups. Uh, we know other etiologies do exist to uh, contribute to laryngotracheitis. So the reason for this study is a very simple study. Uh, simply report the incidence of pharyngeal reflux um, in a larger study of patients with chronic laryngitis using the breast tech or pharyngeal pH device that Dr. Friedman used um, to determine if symptom severity score, reflux symptom score, or chief complaint could predict the presence of pharyngeal reflux and to describe the diurnal pattern of the pharyngeal reflux in our event positive subjects. So this was a prospective analysis of 167 consecutive or pharyngeal page studies for patients with chronic um, from 509 to 1209. Um, they all presented with hoarseness, globus, and throat clearing. Um, most of these patients had multiple of these symptoms. Um, we recorded the presenting symptom type duration, uh, VHI 10, and the RSI or reflux symptom. The next, um, these were recorded at their uh, day of presentation. Um, we excluded subjects for smoking, um, any PPI use during the study, uh, any symptom questionnaire or incomplete pH study. And we used this oropharyngeal pH probe. The sensor was placed at the level of the soft palate. Um, this is the device, which is basically a little wire with a little teardrop pH sensor. It's a very, very sensitive device and has been shown in other studies to pick up laryngopharyngeal reflux even when in the oropharynx. 
Uh, we analyzed the graphs by the uh, data view program. We did have to exclude data um, on for about five minutes during insertion and removal because you do get an artifactual drop in pH uh, during insertion and during meals or acidic beverages. So those graphs were correlated with the patient's food diary. Uh, we recorded all events below baseline of pH 5.5 as abnormal, as also demonstrated in prior normative studies with this device, um, and recorded total supine events, total upright events, a percentage of time below baseline and total time below baseline. Um, event positive pH tracings were defined as upright only, supine only, or combination. Uh, we used MANOVA to compare the dependent variables of our VHI-10 RSI and duration of symptoms uh, between the groups that had positive studies and the groups that had negative studies, and used a simple t-test to compare the time below baseline for upright versus supine refluxers. So this is an example of a normal study. Um, there were a few spikes down, which were meals or beverages, but you can basically see the pH tracing is straight across between a pH of 7 and 7.5. And I'm sorry, those numbers didn't come out well on the slide. Um, um, a nocturnal supine refluxer with basically a normal pH at other times other than the supine period. And this is a patient with combination reflux that had uh, both daytime and uh, nocturnal supine events. So the results that we found, 43% of our studies were normal, with zero events below pH 5.5. Um, again, these, these were not um, at all controversial. These were um, tracings that went straight across. 35% um, of our studies, uh, or 60% of all of our positive studies, showed nocturnal pharyngeal reflux only. And 31 studies, or 19%, showed combination. We only had five studies, or 2%, that were exclusively upright events. So it's a distribution of our positive cases showing that many of our cases were actually supine reflux exclusively. Um, our MANOVA indicated that between the pH positive and pH negative groups, there was no significant difference for VHI-10, RSI, or symptom duration in months. Um, and our chief complaint distribution between our positive studies and those that had negative studies was not significantly different. Um, this is a graphical representation of our chief complaints showing essentially identical groups uh, as far as their their main chief complaint. Again, many of these patients did have other complaints associated with the first one. Um, our mean time below baseline in our upright refluxers was significantly lower than our supine refluxers. And you can, if you look at the, if you think about the graph that I just showed you, um, generally speaking, supine refluxers spend a lot longer time below baseline than the upright refluxers because they, they do not recover from the acid, acid event as easily. Um, and this was a significant. So in conclusion, oral pharyngeal pH monitoring excludes the diagnosis of LPR in 43% of our patients. Uh, the supine reflux or the combination reflux was more common than upright events alone, and the supine refluxers spent a longer time below baseline than the upright refluxers. So upper pH testing is important to determine the optimal timing of PPI medication to avoid unnecessary BID dosing, and chronic laryngitis symptom type, severity, or du duration do not predict the presence or absence of reflux. Thank you.